This example video on a voltage divider will illustrate what you can do with simple series circuit. Imagine the following situation. You have a battery. So here I'm going to draw it as a two cell battery. Right here. And this battery is a 12 volt battery. So e is equal to 12 volts. Now this battery is going to supply some uh, electricity to let's say a part of the circuit that uses the 12 volts in which case you can connect that part of the circuit directly to the battery. But imagine that the circuit is also going to involve a uh, microcontroller for example, and let's pretend that this microcontroller requires 5 volts. If you connect the microcontroller requiring 5 volts to this 12 volt battery, um, it's not going to be very happy. So there are voltage regulators, so it is possible, but let's pretend that in this case you really need to have 5 volts. Not just 12 volts. You need 12 volts, but you also need 5 volts. And you don't want to do this with two different batteries. You want one battery to, go to, to do this. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a voltage divider circuit that's going to involve two resistances, R1 and R2 like this. Okay. So if we connect the battery like that essentially those two resistances right here R1 and R2 are now in parallel to the battery that means that the potential difference between those two lines right here will be the 12 volts so whatever part of the circuit that requires 12 volts uh, is going to be found right here. Okay, so you take that part of the circuit, you connect it right here, you have your 12 volts. But, how about the 5 volts? Well, imagine that I want the 5 volt to be right here. That part of the circuit, I will just connect it between this and this. So the point of this exercise is to find what R1 and R2 might be equal to in order to create a 5 volt difference of potential across R2. So basically we want to have the R2 to be equal to 5 volts knowing that E is equal to 12 volts and what we really want to calculate is what is R1 and what is R2 to achieve that. Okay. If I leave the problem like this, I'm going to have an infinite number of solutions. I'm going to show you how to refine uh, them as well. Okay. So, this circuit, this basic circuit right here, is a series circuit which means that we're going to calculate the equivalent resistance. Okay, that's the first thing. The equivalent resistance, is in si since it is in series, is going to be the sum of the individual resistance. Then, therefore, it's going to be just R1 plus R2. So if I redraw the circuit, I'm going to have my battery with my one cell and my second cell right there. And it's going to be with this equivalent resistance right here that's equal to R1 plus R2. So, what is the current right here? What is the current I? Well, according to Ohm's law, I it's going to be equal to E, the voltage over the equivalent resistance, which is R1 plus R2, okay. which means that VR2, which is 
what we are going to design everything around it's going to be equal to r2 times i which is going to be r2 times e over r1 plus r2 so far so good So, what do we have at this point? We have V of 2 equals R2 times E over R1 plus R2. Okay, let's do a little bit of math here. Can use algebraic manipulation. So, I'm going to rewrite it as R2 over R1 plus R2 times E just the commutative property of multiplication right here. Um, it looks more like the associative almost in this case. Yeah, it's associative because this is associated to this. Anyway, if I now divide both sides by E, that's going to give me VR2 over E is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2. And if I take the reciprocal of both sides, it's going to give me E over VR2 equals R1 plus R2 over R2. Now, this can also be written as R1 over R2 plus R2 over R2, which leaves us with E over VR2 is equal to R1 over R2 plus 1. At this point, I suggest we use numbers. Okay. So what was E? E was 12 volts. What is VR2? That's our target voltage of 5 volts. What is R1? What is R2? I don't know. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides, but this is going to be 5 over 5. This is going to be 12 over 5 minus 5 over 5, which is 7 over 5 equals R1 over R2. So this is a very important result. That gives us the ratio of the resistances needed in order to get 5 volts for the R2. It will also, as a result, give us for the VR1, it's going to give us 7 volts. So what does that mean for R1 and R2? Is it possible to have R1 equal to 7 ohms and R2 be equal to 5 ohms? Is that possible? Is that going to work? Well, yes, it, it will work. But let's calculate I for a second here, if we were to do that. Remember, I was equal to E over R1 plus R2, right? So it would be 12 volts over 5 ohms plus 7 ohms. That's essentially 12 volts over 12 ohms. That would be 1 amp of current. Now, most of the little resistors that you're going to use in your classrooms are going to be a quarter watt resistors. Okay? So, quarter watt resistors. Maybe you'll have slightly bigger resistors. Maybe they can... Um, maybe they're going to be ready for half a watt. What does that mean for resistors? That means that the energy, uh, the, the power... Uh, going through the resistors is going to be transformed and dissipated as heat. Okay, which means that if you have a quarter watt resistor, this amount of uh, power is going to be the largest amount that uh, will essentially guarantee the integrity of the components. Okay, and if you want to calculate it, this is the formula. P equal R I square. Okay. 
which means that P, the power, and let's take our resistance 2, for example. So P2 is going to be R2 times I2 squared. So it's going to be 5 ohms times 1 amp squared. So it's going to be 5 watts. What is going to happen, in your opinion, if the resistor that is rated for a quarter watt is asked to dissipate 5 watt in, uh, of uh, power? But it's going to start smoking, and then it's going to start burning. It's going to have nice little flames. Okay. You can do that in your classroom if you want. It's a nice, cute experiment. I would not recommend that you do that uh, uh, without any supervision. It could be dangerous. So the point is that 7 ohms right here and 5 ohms, even though it will create your 12 volt and 5 volt, are not very uh, sensitive, sensible. So what you should probably do here is replace this by something like 7,000 ohms and 5,000 ohms. And in that case, if you do this calculation again, you're going to find out that the uh, voltage divider provides the voltages that you choose and the uh, current and power dissipated through uh, the resistor is going to be within what is acceptable uh, for this application. I hope that was helpful.